Good evening, it's Kuro. Got a random game in my tier 8 Kagero, going over the matchmaking, tier 9 matchmaking, threats to my ship, looking at the enemy indomitable, Buffalo, Lazao, Z46, Udloy, Akazuki, and Asashio. Um, this game, uh, gonna talk a lot about how to play Kagero. That was a, a recent question that, uh, that had come up. And I'm finally getting a chance to do the commentary on the video. And if you if you look, I am still playing Torpedo Reload on my Kagero. And that comes down to positioning, really. Um, you're going to see that I, I, I shift my position frequently throughout this game. And it's... A lot of it has to do with the amount of support that I have and if you look right here I'm looking I have I'm basically on a weak flank the only ship that I have that support would be a Kansas it's a battleship that's good yeah it's got a lot of gun barrels but it's got a really long reload not the best dispersion it's really one of the worst things for for helping uh, pick a fight with a destroyer and that's something that uh, you know I, I just don't want on this flank and especially because how slow it is if you look it's barely out of spawn and I mean the direction that he's sailing is not even you know in the direction that we need to uh, pull off any sort of uh, um, you know usefulness out here where I'm at and if you look he's actually a reverse course and he's pushing back towards the center of the map so I'm just deciding you know what I'm not gonna play with this I'm just gonna kite back and uh, relocate where I've got better support just gonna throw some make-a-wish torpedoes out here because I don't have any any better torpedo targets for the uh, next foreseeable reload and at this point the enemy can have B cap um, not gonna try to uh, resist it the the good news with a cap like this is it's going to take the enemy team a, a reasonably long period of time usually to uh, push in here to take this cap so you can see one of my threats to my ship is being uh, annihilated right now um, they're sorting out the initial uh, destroyer melee. You can see this this Z46. This guy had to have pushed pretty aggressive to get to get right through here. Uh, unless he spawned out where I was and he just pushed straight through. He, he either cut through here or he happened to be on this on this flank and he pushed through but that's exactly the and you can see double DD out there I'd, I'd have no chance at holding that flank especially with a Kansas so good decision right there I take I do take a little bit of chip damage getting plane spotted um, but gonna start uh, looking for torp targets and one of the the ships that I'm looking at right now uh, obviously this Geniza now uh, he's headed kind of the the opposite direction from where I'm headed, but this Turpitz, he's going to have a decision to make here really quickly. Is he going to try to to push around this island? If so, I might be able to dump torpedoes through here. Uh, if he cuts through the middle, I'm looking right now at la launching torpedoes there, uh, and he's going to end up beaching himself on this island, so I'm just going to circle up where I can... Uh, launch just outside of a detection range and uh, you know get get a pretty good torpedo shot off and you can see he I, I'm looking right now yeah there's no way he can turn out of that so he's going to hit that and uh, there you go you can see he hit launching those torpedoes now a th another threat to my ship out here is this Udaloy. The only reason I'm going to make this aggressive push north is because my New Orleans and my Tulsa are pushing up into this position, meaning I'll, I'll have um, some cover fire if uh, I run into this destroyer. 
So just pushing in up in here and just gonna circle around where uh, I'm seeing a torpedo reload opportunity start to open up. Um, again, torpedoes, it's not always about killing targets, but leaving them vulnerable for your team to, uh, to finish off. It's, um, a lot of times I equate it to a bar fight. It's, uh, it's not always about, uh, being the guy, you know, squared up face to face with destroyers. It's about, you know, coming in and, uh, clubbing the guy from behind that's, uh, up in your buddy's face so first torpedo reload opportunity I'm looking at this John Bart John Bart uh, really love just a bow tank and, and kind of uh, juke back and forth all the time so I'm I know that about them from experience we do get a spot on this Udaloy. Uh, now I've got if you look I've got a Kitakaze that's pushing up here that can help me with the Udaloy. so I'm still not deterred from pushing up up into this island, uh, but if you look, I'm just trying to predict, okay, I think this Jean Bart, he's going to start reversing again, throw some torpedoes out there, might, maybe I can catch him. There's the first uh, torpedo reload, and this is what's so powerful about torpedo reload. You can find yourself in these positions where, you know, if I'm able to to nuke both of these targets what does that do for the enemy team it, it basically crushes their their hold that they've they've set up kind of in this direction they've got a big crossfire from all these battleships and, and the john barton bismarck i hate the new torpedoes uh for for allies uh because they don't have uh any sort of warning alert you can end up eating uh, friendly ordnance that's less damage flying out towards the enemy uh, and because guys no longer care that they'll just launch their torpedoes and just figure oh well if somebody eats them they they eat them uh, because they don't do any any damage anymore um, I just I don't like that change personally so we did uh, get again crippled this Bismarck here with a couple torpedoes and we're just stalking across here now I'm, I'm getting a little aggressive we know the Udaloy is being pushed out we've got DDs that are tied up down here in uh, in B cap so I'm feeling like this is opening up a seam in here that I can kind of push through and exploit I'd really like to get torps off on this John Bart but he's he's presenting the the worst profile to me now I'm seeing a push coming here with my battleships so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna circle back down this direction and I'm gonna try to open this angle up where I get a little bit more of the this ship uh, where I can where I can torp a little bit more side and uh, the idea being um, that this John Bart is going to be most likely reversing and, uh, and angling right at this battleship that's rushing him right now. So I launch a really tight torpedo spread there again. Not, not a lot of ship to play with. I'm kind of relying on um, that tight stack to, uh, to cover the Jean Bart. Now here, I'm just driving outside of gun range. I'm looking to see if I, I can finish this guy. And uh, my team's able to finish him off. <clears throat> That's kind of critical because if I shoot and I get spotted there by the Jean Bart, he can uh, reverse or go forward or something and avoid these torpedoes. And I just want to keep him fat, dumb, and stupid back there. You can see he's starting to turn out and open up more. And it's looking like I'm going to get two, uh, two torpedoes just on the end. But already, I'm doing what a torpedo boat should do. I've already moved on to my next target to just during my torpedo reload. Um, always use your torpedo reload to be moving into a position where you're going to be able to uh, deal more damage. Uh, again, just random allied torpedoes, no warning, no nothing. Thanks, Wargaming. Stripping more skill out of the game. 
So just stocking this Colorado right now. Um, now this this is another example of uh, torpedo reload, where you can use it to ensure that you smash a uh, a single target. I'm not typically fond of of this tactic, but it can work. Uh, mainly because not too many people are running torpedo reload these days. Um, just positioning check. Um, I know the the I'm not worried about the Asashio. Don't want to fight the Z46. I've got my Tulsa here. Got battleships here, so I've still got plenty of support. Uh, if I run into the battleships, the carrier, I can run back to any of these guys and uh, and get support from that. So, you can see already that this Colorado, he's maneuvering because he's being shot at. Those torpedoes are going to miss. But I have the feeling that he's, he's not really going to want to sail right through this gap. And you can, you can see I got a, a, a quick little picture at a last minute turnout. I still catch him with one torpedo. He's probably thinking, oh, the DD, he blew his load and he's going to turn broadside through this gap just in time to uh, catch that next set of torps flying through there. You can see there's the turnout. Again, he's undetected. He's thinking he's probably safe. And <laughs> yeah. So at this point, I've kind of circled back towards my support, and the reason for that is I'm I'm really anticipating the Z46 and Asashio pushing C cap. That that would be the the decision that makes logical sense to me, but it's not really happening, and my support's moving out. So I've got a decision to make. I'm again, I don't want to be stuck out here just with the Kansas fighting two DDs. So I'm just going to go on ahead and bail, and I'm going to push B cap and eventually try to hook up with my Champagne, Kitakaze, and Tulsa and uh, try to be productive elsewhere because, again, if it's just the Asashio, I got no problem with that fight. Uh, if the Z46 is like a quarter HP, I've got no problem with that fight. Maybe three eighths. Um, but... I believe that Z46 still has quite a bit of health. There's an enemy Udaloy, and I'm deciding, you know what? I'm going to go help my team with this Udaloy. You can see just how much HP is on that Z46, and again, he's he's throwing right now by not not pushing the cap I mean he could easily be gunboating in towards C cap right now and uh, be productive that way but he's kiting out and uh, that's giving me the knowledge that C cap's still gonna keep ticking for a while this really does open up the opportunity for me to go in here uh, help kill this Udaloy and uh, recap B and then maybe deal with the CV, uh, maybe circle back to uh, C cap if it's been capped. Uh, but those are the, that's the decisions that I'm talking about. Um, now we see that the Asashio even is up there at D cap. Those those two DDs really hurt their team, just with this big long like circle to nowhere. I mean, they did cap B, but that's still oof. I don't like to, I don't like to see DDs just do this big sweep right through in right through the enemy spawn. It's it's hardly ever productive. So we're gonna settle in. We're gonna cap B cap. My team's gonna pick up A cap. That's really gonna start putting the points pressure on these DDs. The enemy CV. He's running for the border. Um, now this is a downside to my build. Uh, because I don't have smoke, I tend to run the stock gunfire control module. And in the case of Kagero, I've got an 8.6 kilometer maximum gun range. So when I do get 
instances like this where I'm able to shoot at a CV, it, it is kind of painful being able to push in and spot the CV from, you know, 14 plus kilometers out, but I've got a long way to go before I can start shooting. Um, but it's one of those things that I don't often uh, go CV hunting unless I'm actively looking to kill CVs. Uh, especially in a slower torpedo boat like Kagero. It's, uh, Kagero's real strength is doing what I've been doing. Playing right in front of my support. Any DD that wants to, to, to mess around in front of my teammates, if I'm there, uh, unless they're, they're one of a couple, couple ships in the game, they're gonna be outspotted. And, uh, yeah, it's that's Kagero's strength there. So just gonna throw my guns into the mix here, get some extra damage. Finally a DD's on C cap, but it's not gonna matter at this point. When this CV goes down, we're gonna have uh, plenty of points here, and this game's pretty much over. So, another factor, let's talk about the CV this game. Uh, throughout most of this game, the CV is going to have marginal impact on me because I'm around support. And when I, I say I'm around support, if you look at the minimap, I have my concealment circle enabled, 5.4 kilometers. Uh, if my thoughts on this are if I keep... Uh, in, if I keep allied ships within that 5.4 kilometer circle, there's not really much they can do to uh, to to be able to to hunt me down, keep me spotted long enough to get off an attack because destroyers are super concealed uh, in most cases from CVs and. The amount of time that it's going to take a CV to circle around and come back, um, it's just time that, you know, either my AA or and or my allies, it's it's all just going to work on those planes. And I mean, in the case of a tier eight CV, they don't have unlimited planes like a tier ten. Um, I mean, even tier tens, you can you can get the plane but you got to really be throwing planes away in a tier 10 but the point is that you're you're making that that strike uh you're wasting their time uh, making them try to dig you out and uh you know wasting their planes and if if you're angling correctly they don't get a lot out of the out of those attacks it can take a really long time for a CV to kill a destroyer that's um, that's playing well and and uh, we'll have the opportunity now that CVs the the big massive hits are less and less common. Uh, that means the destroyer's got more time to fall back and really get torpedoes or get playing safe where they have two or three allies that are going to be able to work those planes over well. Um, while that plane's trying to spot him. Uh, so anyway, Torpedo Reload Kagero. Um, how's it working today? It's it's one of those things that, I mean, you just play around uh, right in front of your support. You do what a Kagero and a Yagumo and those type of destroyers are supposed to do. And uh, you just work on getting angles with your torpedoes on, on people. When you run into a situation where you can use your guns, um, you use them, and uh, then you scoot to get to get safe. It's uh, I really like this play style with these types of ships. Uh, anyway, hope you guys are having a good night. As always, the link to the build that I used will be in the video description, as will an invite to the community Discord, and if you would like to support the channel, my Patreon. Um, hope you guys are having a good night and I will talk to you later.